Ayo Desunmu is already turning heads. Alex Caruso is showing off his defensive identity, and Billy Donovan is tinkering with lineup options for the Bulls' first preseason game. Guys, I am Ross, this is Arturis Fan Club, and yes, you should be subscribed because this is the first episode of the new season. Yes, I'm opening it here now today. The first week of training camp has concluded, and we are about to start the first week of preseason. This was the last weekend without Bulls basketball until the All-Star break in February. So I'm calling it now. The season is open. You should be subscribed. If you don't know yet, there is a super fan club, only $4.99 a month. There's going to be all kinds of exclusive content going up there throughout the season game recaps, breakdowns, film reviews, all that kind of great stuff that I'm really excited to get into. And just as well, I'm bringing the podcast back in our tourist we trust is on Spotify and Apple Music. If that's how you prefer to get your Bulls content, you can go there instead of here. Um, it'll sound a little bit different, but it'll have most of the, the same content. I'm trying to figure out a, an efficient way um, to separate the YouTube content from the podcast content while having mostly the same stuff. But I digress. Guys, uh, the first week of training camp has concluded. It was an exciting one. A lot of great news, a lot of great stories coming out of Bulls training camp. Not a lot of drama, which I love. Um, obviously, we know about the Patrick Williams injury. We know about the Kobe White injury. We'll get into those in a minute. Um, but so far, so good. Knock on wood. Um, nothing crazy coming out of Bulls training camp right now, which you love to hear. Some other teams around the NBA. Some drama going on in training camp, saying some interesting things. Uh, never a dull day, I'm sure, for the, the Brooklyn Nets media. Uh, just all kinds of interesting sound bites coming out of there on a daily basis, but not here in Chicago. Thankfully, uh, things are sticking to mostly basketball and it sounds promising. We've seen some clips coming out um, from the official Bulls Twitter and Instagram accounts. And yeah, it's exciting to see Lonzo Ball tossing passes to Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan driving the lane and Alex Caruso getting steals and all kinds of really cool stuff. So very exciting time to be a Bulls fan. Our first game is on Tuesday against the Cavaliers and we'll get into some pregame um, when we get closer to the game. Probably have a pregame episode for you on Tuesday. Um, but for today, let's talk about the first week of training camp. Ayo Desunmu is a name that keeps coming up um, in conversations that we keep hearing about uh, turning heads. There were like three separate stories I feel like written about him just in the last few days. Um, a lot of this coming from our guys over at NBC Sports Chicago. Uh, shout out Rob Schaefer has a really good article up um, right now about Ayo Desunmu learning from Mo Cheeks, the Bulls assistant coach, who is an NBA legend, a defensive minded point guard in his prime, um, you know, a championship winner, a Hall of Famer. Uh, we all know his pedigree, and Ayo Desunmu is spending a lot of time learning from him, and you love to see it. Um, Ayo had this to say about Mo Cheeks Me and Mo, we've been going back since I played in Vegas during Summer League. I always liked Mo because he gives you constructive criticism. Every day I pick Mo's brain. I joke around with him a lot. I talk to him 20 minutes every day before practice. We talk about what I need to do in practice to be successful and help me to get better. So that shows you right off the bat. I would assume Mo, this rookie coming out of Illinois, Chicago kid. We know he's a defensive minded kind of combo guard um, whose offense is still raw, but has a lot of potential. Um, you love to see that he is coming in with this attitude of absorbing information, wanting to learn from an NBA legend, Mo Cheeks. Mo Cheeks, who helped Kobe White. Um, you know, a lot of reports came out towards the end of last season, who was struggling with, with some of his turnover issues, uh, with passing the ball, distributing the ball within the offense. Um, he ended up overcoming some of those issues at the end of last season and credited a lot of that to Mo Cheeks. So you love to see Ayo Desunmu come in and learn from a guy um, who obviously has a lot of knowledge to share, built from a similar identity as how Ayo Desunmu plays. Uh, it's just really exciting to, to see him um, learning, you know, so quickly, just right off the bat, 
coming out of college, you know, with Kobe White's injury, Io DeSumo is going to have an opportunity here uh, to get some minutes, especially in preseason. So there's other stuff coming out about him too, not just from Mo Cheeks. Um, Sam Smith had a really good article for Bulls.com um, talking about some of the player comparisons um, to Io DeSumo. The one that he came up with was Chris Duhon. Um, who played for the Bulls back in the day. Um, interesting enough, they were both picked with the 38th overall pick, um, both point guards, obviously. And, you know, coming from that, once again, defensive identity um, that Io DeSunmu is already very, very talented at. Um, DeMar DeRozan, actually, in this article, had some high praise for, for Io DeSunmu. DeRozan said he's pretty damn good. I remember him in college as well, watching him play all through the summer league. Very tough. Creative with the ball, aggressive, great touch around the rim. His ability to score the ball is amazing. Every single day he goes out there to take on the challenge, to compete, nothing but high praise for him, the talent he has. He's gonna be a hell of a player. Hearing that from DeMar DeRozan, an NBA veteran, um, at this point, an NBA star, our new guy, you know, coming in here, he doesn't have to say anything nice about Iodasunmu necessarily. Um, you know, he can just say he's excited for the season, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't have to go out of his, out of his way um, to praise the rookie, but he did. Um, it makes me excited that the chemistry on this team, um, guys are looking out for each other, supporting each other, you know, propping each other up. Um, you love to see it. And then Billy Donovan had some some nice praise for Dasunmu as well. Billy Donovan said this, he's been really impressive to me. I think just his competitive spirit, he's not afraid, he throws himself in there, he works on the defensive end of the floor, he gets into the teeth of the defense, he gets by people, he gets to his spots. He's got a lot to learn, but I think the makeup and the mindset and his competitive spirit, you can see that every day. He's got a lot of confidence and belief in himself, but it doesn't cross over into a place of arrogance or got it all figured out, quote unquote, um, or I know better than everyone else, quote unquote. I think he really believes in his ability, but he's also got this humility that he wants to learn. Um, Another report, Casey Johnson, uh, Alex Caruso went out of his way to point out that Iota Sunmu has been asking him questions about his championship experience. Um, so once again, leaning on his his veterans, which is funny to say about Alex Caruso now, but he is um, leaning on his veterans to uh, to learn more about the NBA level of the game, um, to learn more about what it takes to win in the NBA, and obviously showing um, you know some of those skills uh, that he already possesses on the defensive end, and even getting into the lane and getting to the rack. Um, he does put some nice pressure on the rim. He's he's good at driving, um, especially in transition. He's a really good transition scorer. So Iota Sunmu is going to be a guy to watch in preseason for sure. Um, I talked a little bit about Kobe White at the jump of this podcast. Um, Kobe White is not going to be healthy from what I understand until November. Um, so obviously that gives Iota Sunmu all of preseason and even into the regular season a little bit to potentially get some minutes. Um, and we'll just have to see, you know, how he performs in these preseason games. He's going to get plenty of opportunities. You know, the starters probably not going to play a whole lot, especially in the first couple games. So that'll be a good opportunity for Iota Sunmu to come in um, and really show us some of these things that we're hearing coming out of training camp right now, because, you know, this is high praise. You know, you're talking about NBA legends uh, giving high praise to the rookie, uh, saying that, you know, he's he's showing out right now in, uh, in, in training camp. So if he's able to continue that momentum, uh, there is never a, a thing as too much defense from the guard position, too much defense in general. Uh, so if the Bulls are getting quality defensive minutes from Io Sunmu, you could see him potentially getting some uh, some relief time, uh, maybe early in the regular season. It's possible. There are minutes to go around defensively. Uh, we are absolutely trying to do whatever we can to mitigate some of the defensive deficiencies that the starting five has, um, which we'll get into actually a little bit later. We'll talk a little bit more about the defense from the starting five, but let's transition now into defense um, from the bench unit, from the guard position, from Alex Caruso, who is 100%, we know, getting plenty of minutes this regular season. Iota Sunmu might be able to work himself into a situation where he can get some. Alex Caruso is coming in with a defensive identity from the Frank Vogel system uh, with the Lakers. We know Frank Vogel 
uh, in his days with Indiana. We know he has consistently put out some of the best defenses in the NBA of the last decade or so. Um, so Caruso coming from that Frank Vogel defensive identity, um, so he had a nice little anecdote um, that Rob Schaefer reported. Uh, the quote was was kind of amusing. Here it is. We were doing just dribble handoff drills today and working on guards, busting through screens and not getting screened. And one of the assistants brought me over and said, you do such a great job of getting through screens, Caruso said after Thursday's practice. I told him, well, for three years, that's all I was allowed to do. <laughs> uh, so uh, obviously a little tongue in cheek, but a little bit of truth there too, uh, where Caruso is coming in um, from a team you know, that he was asked to be um, this guy who who was a you know the defensive stopper uh, coming off the bench, but not a whole lot else, and and that that wasn't what they needed from him necessarily. Uh, but you know we're talking about literally uh, the best potentially. I, I, if my the last time I looked at the stats are right, um, the best point of attack defender in the entire NBA, and Alex Caruso. So those those drills definitely paid off, and you can see it already. Uh, transitioning into his time with the Bulls now. Um, you know, assistant coaches are noticing it. He's noticing it. I think Alex Crusoe is going to have more on his plate this season. I think the Bulls are going to ask more of him uh, because they need more from that bench unit. They need more than just, you know, a solid defender. Like they need someone who can run the second unit, especially as we were just talking about with Kobe White's injury. Um, you know, there's, there's going to be a ton of minutes. There's going to be a ton of minutes at that guard position to go around while Kobe White is recovering. Um, and Alex Caruso has the ability to run the offense. Uh, that's an underrated aspect of his game. I feel like his offensive skills are sometimes overlooked because of how good of a defender he is. Um, and obviously, that is not his fault. He is just really good on that side of the ball. Um, so we tend to fixate and, and, and key in on that. Um, but that's no not any fault of his own. I think it's really exciting to see um, how quickly, you know, like I said, assistant coaches, Billy Donovan, um, they're picking up on his skills. Uh, I think that's going to pay dividends because I believe he will be our sixth man this season. Um, so with Alex Caruso kind of fortifying the second unit when you're going, you know, almost pure bench, but I, I do believe there's going to be a lot of staggering minutes. There's going to be a lot of trying to get Zach Levine to run with the twos or DeMar DeRozan to run with the twos, uh, something we've talked about many times here. The idea would be you don't want to have one of, you don't want to have both of Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan off the floor um, for too long. You want to have one of the two on the floor for almost the entirety of the game. Um, and you can do that by staggering those minutes um, and working out different lineups that feature balance. And Alex Caruso is a guy that brings you a lot of balance. Um, he's he's a two-way player, but obviously his defense enables you to pair him with, hey, a guy like Kobe White when Kobe White is healthy again, um, who's almost, le almost purely offense uh, is what Kobe White brings you. Um, so he kind of helps cover up some of those deficiencies. Um, and then, you know, you look at the rest of the guard lineup or guard rotation rather, um, you know, Lonzo is going to be another guy that might get minutes staggered to play with the bench a little bit. Um, Caruso is more of a two guard anyway, so you don't necessarily have to have, you know, a true traditional point guard um, next to Caruso. You can pair him with a guy like Lonzo, um, who is you know, maybe better suited playing on the wing, uh, which is something that Billy Donovan and the rest of the coaching staff are going to have to try to work out during preseason. Um, not totally sure what the plan is, and we will see this week uh, when we get into these preseason games. Um, but to wrap up Caruso, just wanted to, to throw that out there that it's really cool that assistant coaches are already noticing uh, what he's bringing to the table. You, you, you really do love to see that because we were lacking that kind of grittiness and defensive identity last season. Um, so hopefully not only is Caruso going to bring that to the table himself, but you know, showing guys like Iota Sunmu, maybe even showing guys like Kobe White who aren't plus defenders or Zach Levine, who once again, I keep teasing it, but we will get to Zach Levine um, and defense from the starting five here in a minute. And actually let's transition into that uh, because Billy Donovan mentioned specifically uh, this week that he is tinkering with lineup. Um, and this was another tweet from Rob Schaefer, uh, tinkering with lineup options while Pat is out. Um, he actually did go out of his way to mention um, Stanley Johnson in the category of like Derek Jones Jr., Alex Russo, Ray Brown Jr., even mentioned Devontae Green and also mentioned Stanley Johnson. So it sounds like everything is kind of on the table right now 
uh, for the replacement or the, I guess, the temporary replacement for Patrick Williams uh, while he's recovering in the starting lineup. I'm not totally convinced that this injury is going to bleed over into the regular season. Um, from what we've seen, you know, he's not walking around with any kind of noticeable limp, uh, no wrapping, no crutches. So, you know, it seems like this is mostly um, a rest, uh, you know, slash maintenance um, thing going on here with with Patrick Williams. You know, if we were if we were in the playoffs or something like that, I feel like he'd be playing uh, just based on what I've seen and what I've heard. So I, I don't think that Patrick Williams is going to be in jeopardy of missing time in the regular season. I think this will be a good opportunity for Billy Donovan to assess kind of what he has with the bench unit and who could be that true backup for uh, in the case, you know, maybe Patrick Williams, knock on wood, hopefully doesn't. But if there is an injury later in the season, you know, who's who's coming off the bench first? If Patrick Williams is is going to be sitting, um, you know, who is playing that backup for, um, you know, the way traditionally you would look at a, a starting and a bench unit. You know, I think that there's a case to be made here, as we just talked about, with staggering minutes um, to move DeRozan over to the four sometimes. And then you can bring in an extra wing like Derek, Derek Jones Jr. Um, or Troy Brown Jr. or an extra guard like Alex Caruso. So I, I don't think it's that big of a deal necessarily uh which position the backup is playing you know whether it is Derek Jones Jr or Trey Brown Jr like four of the three really doesn't matter that much it more matters who you're pairing them with um so once again it goes back to the idea of you know do you want to bring in a guy like Trey Brown Jr for defense to pair with DeMar DeRozan who has some defensive deficiencies um do you want to bring in a guy like Javante Green who's kind of a jack of all trades he's got uh two-way abilities but he's also a you know a solid defender um do you want to bring in alex caruso and do you want to go three guards deep do you want to do caruso lonzo zach um and then DeRozan at the four so a lot of different options here for billy donovan uh once again we're going to see how he experiments with that during the preseason this week um and especially as we get closer to these games and start to preview them a little bit uh we'll know more obviously we'll know a lot more after the first preseason game billy donovan isn't the type to reveal his starting lineups uh earlier than he has to you know we'll probably find out the starting lineup for preseason game one like an hour or half an hour before tip off uh so don't expect uh him to tip his his hand um, earlier than he needs to with that, even if it's just preseason. Uh, that's just kind of how Billy Donovan rolls from what I understand. So um, all good there though. I, I still think, like I said, Patrick Williams should be ready um, for at least the first week of the regular season. You know, even if it's a couple games into the regular season, I think he'll be, he'll be ready by late October. Um, you know, it, it, it does suck to miss some of these preseason uh, minutes for, for Patrick Williams. I, I would like to see him out there once again, you know, getting involved, getting accustomed to these new teammates, um, you know, grow, growing chemistry with the new guys. But, you know, there's there's plenty of time to do that during training camp. Um, another thing that came out with that Mo Cheeks story with Iota Sumu, Patrick Williams has been spending a lot of time with Mo Cheeks too, from what I understand. Um, so, you know, he's obviously still very involved in what's going on in training camp right now. He's there every day, um, still doing some drills from what I understand, just not, uh, you know, participating in full contact basketball activity. Uh, same thing with Kobe White. Actually, I wanted to mention um, Kobe White did talk to the media a little bit about uh, some of the things he's doing um, in his recovery. Uh, so it sounds like he's able to to put up um, some floaters, um, you know, just kind of one handed, um, you know, moves, I guess. I, I, I it, From what I understand, it's not anything intense, but he is still being active. Obviously, conditioning wise, he is good because it is a shoulder injury. Um, you know, he is still able to, you know, to, to get his his legs moving um, and to stay in shape that way. Uh, just, you know, we'll have to see as he kind of works back through his shot mechanics, um, how long that takes him uh, to get comfortable with again. But once again, it's not his shooting shoulder. Um, it's his off shoulder. So I really feel like not a whole lot will be interrupted uh, by the recovery process through through this for Kobe White. Um, we'll see. I mean, like I said, you know, November is the, the estimated return for, for, for Kobe White coming back from the shoulder injury. Uh, it doesn't sound serious. It doesn't sound like the team um, is panicking in any way. They're just kind of holding out hope that he will be totally conditioned and ready to go as soon as he's cleared 
um, by the medical team to, to start playing again. So the, that's encouraging. We'll see how that ends up panning out. We've heard encouraging stories before. Uh, this is a new training staff. This is a new regime. So hopefully some of those dark days are behind us. So that's Kobe White. That's Patrick Williams. That's the update on those guys. Now, we I kept teasing it. We kept talking about defense from the starting five. Obviously, you're going to lose a little bit uh, with Patrick Williams being out. But Zach Levine has been on record multiple times this offseason and has been mentioning it even more now that we're back in training camp and we had media day that he is focused on becoming a I mean, someone challenged him. Um, I think it was Kendall Gill um, from NBC Sports Chicago. I believe it was him um, who challenged Zach Levine um, to be an all defensive player. Now, we'll see. Um, that's that's asking a lot and it's not even necessarily um, necessary. Uh, you know, Zach doesn't need to be an all defensive level player. Just being better on defense will instantly um, elevate uh, you know, the entire defensive presence um, of this team, you know, th they were already not bad on defense last season. We were talking like 12th in the league um, in defense, uh, defensive rating, which is not bad at all. You know, a little bit above average. If Zach takes a leap on that end of the floor, you know, we're talking about potentially top 10 and maybe even higher than that. So he doesn't need to necessarily be all defensive. I'm not saying he shouldn't be. If he can do it, uh, He's winning MVP. If Zach Levine becomes an all defensive level player on top of his scoring output and efficiency, um, the Bulls are winning the finals. Like that's that's insane uh, to consider what he's already so good at. If he were to add that to his game, uh, he'd be one of the best players in the entire league. So that's all to say, uh, you know, I don't think he's going to necessarily take that big of a jump. Um, but I do think he will be much better on defense this season. Uh, we've talked about the Olympics. He was playing really great defense uh, while he was there in Tokyo uh, for the Olympics. And we know that Zach, every season in the NBA, he has added elements to his game or improved upon things he was already good at. Every single season he's been in the league. Um, and obviously we're going into year eight now. He's It's his jersey year, uh, which is a big year for NBA players if they can reach it. I know some guys are... A little too high up there, but Zach Levine in year eight um, got the jersey year, which should be exciting for him. And he is focused on becoming a better defensive player. And I'm, a, I'm really excited to see it. Uh, we've talked about before how the, the new offensive weapons that the Bulls have now will take some of that pressure off of Zach, which will give him more energy to exert on the defensive end. Obviously, spending time with Team USA, he learns, um, you know, new tendencies, uh, new habits, new, you know, new ways of looking at the game, new mindsets from all of these NBA uh, stars that he was spending every day practicing and training with. I um, mean, just talking to, you know, just talking to Kevin Durant. Uh, just talking to guys like Jason Tatum, like learning uh, the, the the ways that they approach um, the defensive aspect of the game. Um, and then also Alex Caruso being here and, you know, learning from him, Alizé Johnson being here, learning from him, even Io DeSumo, even though he's a rookie, like learning some of those defensive tendencies from these guys uh, who maybe it's a little more natural for them. You know, scoring is maybe a little more natural for Zach, but learning what their approaches uh, as you know defensive first kind of players um, that maybe Zach can incorporate into into his repertoire and into what he does um, to approach the game. So those are things that I'm really excited about for Zach. You know, I, I think that the sky really is the limit for him um, because physically there are no uh, obstacles. Like physic, the physicality of the NBA. Um, you know, strength. Obviously, he's a very um, he's a very strong um, scorer. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the way to phrase it. He's he's got very good um, lateral st or um, sorry leaping strength. Um, the the strength in terms of like you know defending in the posts, uh, core strength. Maybe not his his strong suit right now. But those are things that you know can be improved upon and once again like i said the physicality is not the problem for him um some of the team defense things you know th those iq defensive iq um you know learning the intricacies of of communicating 
of switching, um, things like that he struggled with. On ball, he's always been a strong def defender, in my opinion, or a solid defender, in my opinion. I, I guess strong um, is, is, is a strong word because, you know, we're, we're still looking at a guy who has been a negative net defender throughout his career. So I'm not going to go that far, but the tendencies are there. The ability is there. It's not something we haven't seen from him before. Um, it's just something consistently we'd like to see more of. And I think once again, going back to the new additions this team has, even having new defensive additions like Alex Caruso, um, which enables Zach to maybe, you know, hone in on a player who isn't necessarily the best um, of the opposing team. You know, before Patrick Williams got here, uh, that was kind of Zach's role. And it's just not really his role in general that he should be playing. So having the ability to have guys like Patrick Williams, Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, um, who are good defenders and can kind of um, take some of that pressure off of you uh, to go out and, and play good defense on, you know, a guy who is maybe closer to your level um, of aptitude on, on that end of the on, on that end of the court. Um, so Zach, once again, I have full faith in him to improve defensively this season. All defense is high praise and a high goal um, to try to achieve. And if he does it, like I said, we are looking at one of the best players in the league. So more power to you, Zach. Go out and do it. Um, a couple other things just to mention here. Derek Jones Jr., another report from NBC Sports Chicago. Um, he's excited for a fresh start in Chicago and apparently used to be a Bulls super fan. Um, big fan of Derek Rose and Michael Jordan. Um, so must have had a similar childhood to like everyone watching this video. Uh, it's really cool to hear that from Derek Jones Jr. It sounds like a dude who's really excited to get to work this season. Another guy I feel like, along with Trey Brown Jr. Um, and Tony Bradley, I feel like are flying under the radar a little bit. Um, Derek Jones Jr., you know, we're talking about a guy here who is a very good defender and I feel like is a streaky shooter um, and we know what he can do, you know, at the rim, um, dunking it and yamming it. So I, I, I do think that there's more to Derek Jones Jr. than meets the eye. Um, I feel like we're talking about a guy who could end up locking down that backup four spot and just having it on lock all season. You know, we're, we're, we're sitting here talking about tinkering the lineup, Billy Donovan looking at all of his different options. There's a chance that we go out there on Tuesday against the Cavaliers and Derek Jones Jr. is just the clear and obvious best option um, to be that backup for. Uh, it's it's very, very possible. I don't want to overlook that, that possibility uh, just because the dude is ready to go and really wasn't given many good opportunities um, in his last stint with Portland. So I feel like he's a guy that kind of has a chip on his shoulder. Another one of those guys that we've talked about kind of feels like a misfit um, who, you know, kind of a castaway, kind of a misfit who comes to Chicago and is trying to find a home. Um, we know he's on an expiring deal, another incentive for him um, to really show out this season and try to get a new contract next year. Uh, but just a lot of different factors on this team um, that make me excited for the kind of mindset they'll be playing with this season. Um, kind of underdogs, but kind of with something to prove. Um, you know, they've been doubted, they've been cast away. Guys like DeMar DeRozan, he's been doubted his whole career. You know, with the Kawhi Leonard situation, you know, not never reaching the finals, um, you know, always losing to LeBron, Zach Levine, having just <laughs> bad season after bad season under bad coach under bad coach. Um, Lonzo Ball, same thing. A lot of people doubted him coming into the NBA and then doubted him after the trade to the Pelicans. Um, so just a lot of a lot of different players on this team um, that have a lot to prove this season, I feel like. And Derek Jones Jr. is one of those guys not to be overlooked. So I'm excited to see how he plays in preseason. And he's definitely a, good, a dude you should be looking out for to get heavy regular season minutes coming off the bench for sure. Um, another thing, let's just quickly talk about um, the preseason games coming up this week. Yes, uh, Cavaliers on Tuesday, Pelicans on Friday. A little bit of a preview for opening week for the Bulls there. Um, you know, the home opener will be against the Pelicans on October 22nd. Those really will be present. I'm very excited. Um, in these games this week, we're unlikely to see heavy minutes for the starters. You know, there's the, the Lakers and Nets. They're not even playing their starters for the first preseason game. But I do think we will see some of them. Um, you know, I think it's important having kind of a totally revamped roster. Not even kind of. We're, we are talking about a totally revamped roster. Uh, you know, you're only bringing back, what, two starters from the end of last season. 
uh, and Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic and Patrick Williams, I should say, but we're not totally sure if he'll be ready to start the season. But, you know, you're, you're talking about a totally, totally revamped roster. Yeah, you should get these guys out there to get some, some in-game minutes um, to see how it works, to tinker with, you know, do you want to try Lonzo Ball as a traditional point guard? Do you want to try DeMar DeRozan facilitating the offense? Um, do you want to try DeRozan at the four, him at the three? How do you want to structure things? Do you want to try Caruso on the starting lineup? Just so many different things to uh, to tinker and experiment with here. Um, I think it'll be really fun to watch, you know, because for one, yes, it's going to be the start of the new Bulls era, you know, unofficially because it's preseason. Uh, that's an, an exciting angle to watch just in general because it's, you know, a new season. Um, but the angle of, of experimentation, you know, and that's kind of what I expect Billy Donovan to do and I'm happy about it. I, I do think that the, the preseason and even a little bit of the early regular season will be a perfect opportunity uh, for him to experiment with the starting lineup, experiment with the bench, see what's working, see what isn't. We have so many pieces now. Uh, you know, you go back to last season and it was like, how do I get the most out of a roster that just isn't very good, unfortunately? And now it's like, okay, we have a roster that's pretty solid. How do I get the most um, out of the balance, you know, between defense and offense, starters and bench? Uh, what, what do we do to maximize all of these talented individuals that we have on the team? Um, you know, you you go down and you have dudes like, you know, Marco Simonovic and Ayo Desumu who are technically rookie. Well, you know, Marco was drafted last year, but he is a rookie now coming over for his first season. Ayo Desumu obviously is a rookie coming out of college. Like those guys are going to be at the bottom of the bench, but those guys are all actually pretty talented and, you know, could provide you some, some nice minutes. You know, Marco Simonovic with his offensive abilities, Ayo Desumu with his defensive abilities. Uh, so there's just a lot of pieces to play with here. And I think it'll be um, even a little bit of an extenuate, ex, um, a continuation rather, sorry, stumbling over my words, a little continuation of the, the summer league games that we saw uh, with Iota Sunmu, Devon Dotson. Um, we won't see Patrick Williams, but we will see Marco Simonovic. So there, there are some guys, even Ethan Thompson coming back. So there are some guys from summer league that we'll see um, in preseason. And I think it'll be, you know, ha second half of these preseason games, it'll be a lot like those summer league games. Um, hopefully not in the, the tempo, uh, and the shooting uh, that we saw in Summer League, because that was abysmal. But you'll see a lot of minutes for these younger guys um, to go out there and keep, you know, getting acclimated to the NBA game. I'm excited to see how different Iota Sunu and Marko Simonovic and maybe not so different look um, coming from Summer League and now spending some time in training camp and having a couple months um, to condition themselves and get ready for the season. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what looks different and what maybe doesn't. Um, I would assume, I, you know, with all these great stories coming out of training camp, I expect him to play even better than we saw in Summer League. And same thing with Marco Simonovic. You know, I think Marco showed us a lot of good tendencies. Um, I love his aggressiveness. I love his mindset. You know, just at times was not physically prepared um, for the, the, the level that he's playing at now coming from uh, you know, a, a, a different kind of league, obviously with not NBA level talent over there in Europe, um, specifically in Serbia. So with Marko Simonovic coming over now, I, I want to see him shoot more consistently. That was something we didn't really see from him in summer league, uh, which once again, you know, talking about different leagues, he was playing in a league that had a different length for three pointers. Um, so hopefully now that he's had more time to get acclimated um, and more time to, to shoot with the new distance that he's going to be playing under, you know, maybe we'll see his shot fall a little more consistently. You know, maybe we'll see a little more confidence. Um, that'd be really cool to see from Marko Simonovic um, to see him kind of come into his own as an NBA player now and not just a dude that we brought over from Europe. Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of cool storylines to watch here this week, guys. Um, it's going to be a really exciting first week of preseason for the Bulls. You know, we, we talk all the time about, you know, experimenting, tinkering, all this new stuff, all the new toys, all the new pieces. We finally get to see it in action. Instead of talking about it, we get to see it. And I am just so hyped for that. So you guys will hear again uh, from me prior to the game on Tuesday. We'll do a little pregame, a little preview um, of what we expect from the Bulls. And coming up here uh, before the start of the season, I am expecting to do a bigger podcast just with, you know, total regular season expectations, goals, um, predictions for, for the Bulls and the NBA at large. So look out for that here in the next couple of weeks. 
Uh, once again, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Music. If you didn't know, you can listen on Spotify or Apple Music to the Inner Tourist We Trust podcast. Um, there is the Super Fan Club for only four ninety nine a month. Only four ninety nine a month on YouTube. Super Fan Club has exclusive content, early access to videos, perks, film studies, all kinds of really cool stuff. And the Arturis Fan Club merch shop is open, arturisfanclub.com slash shop. Um, so once again, just to recap, you can listen to this on YouTube. You can listen to this on Spotify or Apple Music. However, you consume uh, your podcasts, but we are back. So make sure you are subscribed on whatever platform you're listening um, and make sure to turn on those notifications for new videos and new podcasts because we're going to have new stuff coming out all the time game previews, game recaps, all kinds of great stuff. So stay tuned, guys. It's going to be a really, really fun season. I'm really excited uh, to spend it with you guys. So thank you for watching or listening, and I will talk to you guys very soon.